Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping into Spad.next and 0.9.22 release. We got a cool feature that was just added for Stream Decks, and we want to jump into real quickly how this new auto layer mode works. So if you remember, you got your video guides, you've got your sections, so you can come in here, find all things related to Stream Deck and other stuff. And of course, very important is the release notes. So you can always come into the release notes and kind of look up all the cool stuff that you may have a question about. Uh, and then of course, don't forget, jump on over to the Discord uh, if you want to ask those questions. Just make sure you put them in the Stream Deck area or the correct sim area. So let's head over to our Stream Deck and let's talk about one of the things It's kind of been the norm. This master battery or master caution, we're doing it the way we kind of always did things. Generally go into your button gauge, you would create, you know, an image layer. And now you've got it so that when the caution LVAR is a zero, it will replace the image with the off image. And when it's a one, it will replace that image with the on image, right? So if we execute this using the right click, uh, of course, it wouldn't function because it's not a one. If we force it and ignore the conditions, you know, if the LVAR was a one, this would automatically be coming on because of the change image. So it works like a script. And then of course, when it got set to a zero, it would execute automatically and go back to being off. Now, of course, with Stream Deck functions, you go to the add event and there you find the special items, change color, change layer, change image and change label. So label is changing text image. So like we were saying, you change an image based on a condition or some data changing will then uh, initiate your action of changing the image. And of course we have layer mode. So layer mode allows you to make a layer enabled or visible or invisible. You can also change color of anything that allows you to apply colors. So the color background could be changed as well as say text color uh, can be changed. So when you look at the ice example, you'll notice because I was using the background because I don't have an image for it, I just did some text kind of grayed out so it looks like you kind of see the image and then what would happen is if this event was to run so if that goes to a one it would change the color uh, to that orange color right so layer zero is going to change that color so that could also be the text if we wanted the text to change color we wanted text to flash we can do all those same things with the change color so what was cool about the uh, layer control is it's opened up some other abilities for us and one of those is to change how we would do this functionality. So instead of having to create a event for on and an event for off where we change two colors or two labels, like here, I've gone and made a change with when I was implementing my tablet stuff. So here with the chalks, this is where having to build new versions of these buttons for this one's tablet, uh, I decided to invoke the layer mode. So again, this, this is going to happen when you invoke the first part of creating that first base of the button. And since the others are already built, I'm not going to go back and change those. But these were new. And so here what we did different is when you look at the button gauge itself, you'll notice now we actually have two different images. We have the off image, which is below the on image. And now we can take the layer and we can disable it. So instead of changing an image and needing one for an on and one for an off, now in change layer mode, not only can you drive a device, the targeted button, the image layer, so you could pick any of the layers that you wanted, and then you can set whether it's on. So you could even turn the text off if you wanted to. So here we want to turn the layer mode on and yes, you could set this to flash. Maybe you wanted it to blink, so you were blinking the, the caution light. You could do that uh, and go ahead and, and add a flash. In this case, we want it to turn on because it's going to be enabled. And so what was recently added is the auto off function. So now by enabling this auto off, we no longer have to create two instances for flipping that image. 
for me to do an increment, I'm incrementing by one and to get it to work like a toggle, I set a limit of zero max of one and I allow rollover. So that means when it's at the max and I send one, it will go back to minimum value. So it'll start over again. If this was zero to a max of three, it would go zero to one to two to three to zero. So as we increment that, you will now see that it is going to enable that layer because the value is now equal to one. And so we're also going to see over here in the counts, you can now see when it triggers the first count. So it triggered based on the condition becoming valid. And the count on the right hand side is going to be any time that condition is no longer valid. And so it automatically turns it off or auto off. One of the other examples that I could use, mic and monitor. Here I made a copy of it and I've already edited it. But here you could see the way I used to have to do this was I was changing the label and I was changing the text to blank it out. Um, I could have probably also changed the color and gone between the lime green and black. That would have been another way, just change the color of the text. But again, I was going to need something for when COM1 was transmitting, when it wasn't, when COM2 was transmitting. So when we built the gauge, we built it like this, where we had a 1 and a 2 for the mics, a 1 and a 2 for the monitors. So following along with how on a G3000 GTC module or even how a GTN 750 functions with how you select mics and monitors. So now what's really cool is we could eliminate all of these off scenarios and change these. So for example, for this one, what I did was I just deleted that event. I changed the trigger type to the mode because you'll remember change layer mode change color value change image change label so right now it's a text label so we're going to change it to the layer mode mode and now when we edit this and of course we don't care about this anymore because we need to delete this action because we're now a layer mode so we're not going to change a label and when we hit add action it automatically brings up the layer mode and we could now say we want to control that first mic and it's going to be on and we're going to set it to auto off. So now that that is complete, now we have when it's going to turn it on and when it's going to automatically turn it off. And so I just went through here one by one deleting these and editing them by simply right clicking, change trigger mode and head over to that layer mode. So once we were complete, we were now down to fewer events. So this allows us when building some of these complex layering, because uh, again, you can build this image layering, which is also really cool for how you can now use switches and layer it on top of text uh, so that you can create switches that will go over top of the text in, as opposed to having to build out all kinds of images. Here's an example where we're doing text and changing the images, of course, the images underneath. Here with this type of a switch, we were able to put the text below the image. So here what you'll see is there's a background layer. There's a background image. So that is uh, an image I'm using kind of as a texture. Then we've got our top text, which is POS. We got our bottom text, which is off. And then what we've got is our switch, which is literally the switch with all transparency around it. So it fits perfectly inside of the switch area. And then what we're doing is we are changing the image because now we're making a transparency for that switch and allowing us to layer it on top of other layers. That trick won't work because technically the switch up, you'll still see the switch down. In this case, we are staying with the swapping of the switches. So that way we can make switches sit on top of the text, but we don't have to go in and build out every single switch with all of the text. We're able to use the same switch. So two images, an up and a down, and we can just change the text manually and relink it to the variables that we want. Hopefully this uh, enlightens you into some new ideas when you're building your Stream Deck configs. If so, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, also, don't forget, use the Discord and use the Stream Deck section for questions related to Stream Deck. If you made it this far, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and come along on the next video. 
And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.